All right. Well, welcome to Code Busters Division A Coaches Training. I'm Monica Bergler. And I'm Logan Bergler. And we are going to be the supervisors for this event uh, for Division uh, A. Um, we both have um, many years of experience with Division uh, B and C, um, coaching it and participating in it. Um, today, we're going to be going over the rules. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the different codes that um, the students are going to need to know how to solve, and then um, coaching strategies uh, for making your team successful, and then uh, resources that are available out on the internet. First off is just some basic terminology that you might hear um, when looking um, up uh, Cipher information. Uh, basically, uh, plain text is the uh, English language or Spanish, uh, or you know, the regular language uh, that you can read the code. Uh, cipher text is the um, symbols or the gibberish uh, letters that you have to decode. Uh, a key is uh, given for certain ciphers uh, in order to solve the text. And those are always given to the students. Um, they don't have to figure them out. Uh, decryption is converting cipher text into plain text with or without a key. And that's basically what they're doing in this whole competition is uh, decrypting. Uh, a crib is uh, basically a hint that they're given with some letters uh, so they know what uh, letters equal what in a uh, certain puzzle to get them started. Uh, decryption table is used with certain ciphers. Um, some of those tables will be provided and some that they will need to know how to recreate those tables. And then crypto, crypto analysis is analyzing the cipher text uh, determine a key and then decrypting. Again, they're always going to be given the key, um, but this is just part of analyzing the problem to be able to solve it. I have a question on that page, just yes. for clarification. You did mention in the plain text uh, context, you said English or Spanish. And so now I know Spanish is a challenge that is given to the older students, but I just want to yes. clarify for Division A, we will it's only do English. Yes, it's only English. Sorry about that. Yep. Thank you. I know you're, yeah. you've got your your oars in a lot of places. So yeah. <laughs> um, so the rules for Division A, uh, basically, students will be tested on their ability to decode encrypted messages. There'll be several different types of um, problems that they will need to know how to solve. You can have up to two students on the team. Um, I do recommend having two, but you, you know, one student could go in there and do it. Um, they only need to bring pencils and erasers, nothing else, uh, any scratch paper or anything like that that they would need would be provided uh, for them. The tests are written where the students will not be able to finish the test. Um, there's um, more problems than they'll have time to solve. And, and that's how it's done at all the divisions. And basically that just gives the teams uh, freedom to pick and choose what type of problems they wanna be able to solve. And the students can answer any questions in any order. The test usually will come in a folder uh, and they can take the test apart. They can individually work on problems or they can work on problems together. There's no rules on that. Uh, scoring, uh, high score wins in this. Uh, points are awarded for every correct letter in the problem. So even if they didn't finish it, they can get partial credit for that problem. If they do finish it 100%, they will get a bonus uh, points on that problem. And the points values are um, for each problem are clearly indicated. Uh, so for example, the, the uh, example on the screen, it says uh, 21 points, uh, solve this cipher, Caesar cipher with a shift of three. So if they complete it 100%, they will get 21 points. If they don't complete it 100%, they'll get something less than the 21 points um, based on each letter that they get correct. 
Now, any letters that they are given, uh, like a, the, if they were given a crib, um, they're not gonna get points for those letters because they were given those letters, only ones that they have actually solved. You know, Logan's gonna uh, go over the different types of ciphers that you'll see on the test. This year, uh, participants will need to know six uh, different ciphers, those being the Atbash, Caesar, Aristocrat, Visioneer, Pigpen, and Tapcode. Uh, we'll go over those in the next couple slides. First one uh, that participants will need to know, and in my opinion, in my opinion, is the simplest one is the at bash cipher. In this cipher, you'll be given cipher text in the form of random letters, and every letter um, codes to its opposite letter in the alphabet. So A will code to Z, B to Y, uh, and so on. Uh, and once you substitute each letter with its opposite, you should have your plain text. And that would be the answer to an app bash. Uh, a Caesar is pretty similar. How it works is that the entire alphabet is shifted um, to the left or right. In this case, up to five letters in either direction. And you have to find how far it is shifted and um, shift the ciphertext, which once again is uh, random letters, uh, and you'll have to shift that into plain text. So in this example here, you might get B, Z, D, R, Z, Q. And if you shift each letter one space uh, forward, uh, B will turn to C, Z will loop around to A, and so on and so forth until you get Caesar. The aristocrat is the third cipher that participants will need to know, and it's likely the hardest ones that they'll find on the test, although they're also worth the most points. These ones are also ones that continue throughout Division B and Division C, so they're very useful to know uh, for those who, can, uh, who plan to do code busters in the future. Uh, in this type of cipher, each letter uh, codes for another random letter in the alphabet that isn't itself. Um, the frequencies of each letter uh, in the cipher will be given, and uh, participants will have to figure out which letter maps to which one. Uh, and depending on the difficulty, a hint may be provided that gives a set amount of letters to the students. Uh, the next cipher that they will need to know is the Visionaire cipher, which utilizes uh, this table here. This will be given on all of the tests. Uh, that they will compete in. Uh, and although it looks a little overwhelming, it's not too bad once you understand how it works. Each Visioneer cipher, you'll get your ciphertext, which random letters, um, and you'll get a key, which is usually just a short word. Uh, and what you'll do is you'll take your ciphertext, and on top of it, you'll write your key repeated over and over, like right here, where the ciphertext is V, W, P, etc and they wrote time uh, repeatedly until the ciphertext ends. What you'll then do is in the left column of the big table, you'll find the letter of the key. In this case, for the first letter, that would be T. You'll go over in the table in order to find uh, where the V shows up, as that's the ciphertext. And once you find that, you'll go up and find which uh, letter is at the top where those correlate. In this case, if you find T, go over to V and move up, you'll find that the letter is C. And you'll keep doing that until you find all of the plain text. Some common mistakes with the cipher are skipping letters when copying the key and looking up the wrong column. The next cipher that participants will need to know is the pig pen cipher. It utilizes this chart, but this chart will not be given on any tests, so uh, participants will need to know how to recreate this chart. In this cipher, uh, the ciphertext will be a series of symbols like the ones below, and each of them correlates to a letter. To find out which uh, symbol correlates to which letter, you'll have to reproduce this table, and in order to do that, you'll have to make two hashtags and two X's, and in the second hashtag and the second X, you'll place dots in each of the spaces. Then you'll write out the alphabet like you're reading a book uh, for each of the hashtags and Xs, and you'll get this chart. Uh, and for this example here, you might get this first symbol, 
And as you can see, that corresponds to A based on the reproduced chart. The final cipher that participants will need to know this year is the tap code cipher. Uh, it utilizes this chart, which will not be given on any tests. So once again, participants will need to know how to recreate this table. Uh, to recreate the table, you'll make a uh, five by five grid for the letters and number each row and column one through five. And then you'll write out the alphabet like you're reading a book, except that the K will go in the same box as C, meaning when you get to K in the alphabet, you'll skip over it. Uh, and in order to determine the plain text, you'll have to look at the ciphertext, which is a series of dots and spaces and uh, use the amount of dots and matched up with the table. So let's just say you get one dot, a space and another dot, uh, you, that would be corresponding to one and one, which on the table is A. If you get say a one and then a series of five dots, you'd go to uh, row one, column five, and that corresponds to E. And you'll keep doing this until you get the full plain text. I have a clarifying question. I, I think you said it, but I just wanted to be certain. For the aristocrat um, cipher, you will be providing a frequency table as part yes. of the test? OK. Yes. OK, so how do you coach for this event? Um, really, the key to it is practicing the problems. Um, the more you practice them, uh, the easier they get. Uh, where you can find patterns and the, the students will be able to see um, words in the cipher and they'll also start memorizing some of the uh, symbols in the tap code and pig pen so they don't always have to depend on the um, charts. Um, again, two students can be on the team. Um, I'd highly recommend it because like I said, the, the test is written where you can't finish it. So one student um, working by themselves can still participate, um, just they won't get as many problems done most likely. Uh, I suggest dividing and conquering the test that each student should be working on their own puzzle. Um, if they get stuck, they can ask their teammate, you know, if they see something that they don't, but um, there are so, so many problems that they really need to be working um, at all times on something. Um, and not just watching somebody else uh, solve a problem. Um, you need to learn the pig pen and tap code tables. Uh, they are pretty um, simple tables once you know how they are um, constructed um, and those will be important so that they can actually um, solve those problems. Um, with aristocrats, if you're stuck, um, you need to just try something, put some letters in, see where it goes. If it's not working, you know, that's what the erasers for, you know, erase those and try something else. Um, that's really a big part of, especially the aristocrats um, is, is trying things and seeing what works. Um, the other thing is there are a lot of um, uh, pattern words out there that um, have, you know, repeat letters within them. And those are the patterns they can start noticing um, as they're working on these problems, like a, um, a common one is the word that, um, you know, so it has a pattern of one, two, three, one, um, because the T um, as a, is on both sides of that letter. So a lot of times students will notice that um, in the code, and that's the first thing they'll try. Now, there are other words that use that pattern, and you start learning those too, but there's quite a few other words out there that you start to notice like people or science, because again, they have letters that they repeat and you just start noticing those, those patterns. Um, what works best for your team? There's different strategies on how to attack this test. Um, do you have one student work on just high point problems and the other student working on low point ones? Because um, the high point ones are going to take longer to do. The low point ones shouldn't take as long. So you have to come up with a strategy, um, you know, or you could have both students just work on low point ones. Uh, it, it really depends on what the students are comfortable with um, and testing it out. 
like I said, uh, practice is a big thing. Once you introduced the different problems to the students, um, it's good to create tests and, and time them and have them get comfortable with trying to solve all these problems in a time limit. Um, when you're teaching them the different problems, um, I suggest this order uh, just because the at bash and the Caesar are relatively simple uh, problems to solve and that'll give them some confidence in being able to solve these problems. Uh, the aristocrat is, like Logan said, one of the harder ones that they're going to see, uh, but I recommend getting that out of the way in the beginning because this is the problem the type of problem that is going to be worth the most points. And um, this one, the more you practice, the def, uh, you know, you really do see an improvement with this, this type of problem. And then the other three, the pig pen and the tap code, they're both very similar. Um, you have to know the tables, um, but they are both symbol based. And then the visioneer um, is the most different because it uses a key and you have to use that big chart um, to solve it. But again, once they know them all, I would start testing them on all the different kinds and timing them with that. Now, as coaches and students, uh, there's lots of resources out there. Uh, one good place to start is the Macomb Science Olympiad website. Uh, there's a Code Buster section. We do have a sample test out there and an answer key so you can see what a test will look like. And there's also many video resources that we um, put in there uh, that we found on um, online. Uh, but you can also go to YouTube and search any of these um, different uh, codes and you'll be able to find other resources and videos explaining how to do them. Another site that you can go to is the Science Olympiad Code Buster site. Um, here they have an explanation of how each cipher works. And it also has a really good resource on creating these tests um, where you just type in the um, plain text and it'll create the cipher text for you. Uh, so it makes creating tests for practice uh, very easy. Uh, so I would definitely recommend both of those sites, but there are many others out there. Um, and again, um, YouTube and um, just Googling the different ciphers, you can be able to find different resources out there. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, one, and these are actually two questions that are related. One, how many questions would we expect to see on a test? And will all types of the ciphers that you've described be on an individual test? We, you probably will be seeing between 12 and 15 probably uh, questions on the test. Um, we haven't written the test yet, so we're not exactly sure, but um, I'm, I'm thinking between 12 and 15. Um, there will be at least one of each cipher on the test. Um, obviously, some will be more if we're, if we're having 15 questions. Um, I would um, say that the aristocrat will show up more than any of the other ones. And probably at bash will probably show up the least amount just because it's, it's so easy. Um, but yeah, there will be a variety of all these type of problems on there to pick and choose from. Okay, thank you. I, also, I would like to do a little advertising too. Okay. Uh, you guys have agreed to run a workshop for us. Uh, on February 9th, and if, if folks haven't noticed already, there are multiple places on the Macomb Science Olympiad website where they could uh, find the registration form for that, and a registration is required. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, a lot of uh, event teams will come out and, and uh, take advantage of your skills. Yeah, it'll be a good workshop. We'll actually go through how to solve each of these problems in depth and um, have some sample um, problems for the students to work through and then probably some extra ones that they can take home and work on. So. All right, well, if that's all the questions, I wanna thank you for attending the training and we look forward to seeing you at the workshop. Thank you.